previously on the high risk wrestling podcast here he looked awesome looked awesome but at the end of the day it wasn't enough he gets a uranagi he went for the frog splash but theory gets his knees up and seth hits him with a stomp theory pulled four back into the ring one two three our final two are seth rollins and austin theory you probably could have figured that out and it looks like theory is going to win until good afternoon good morning good evening everybody it is saturday february 25th and you know what that means it is time for the high risk wrestling podcast i am your host i well i'm going to wrestlemania and next year not not this year but i but but yeah it's me jeremy pierce what's going on everybody and we have ourselves a good show for you today as always you can check me out on the socials at charismatic creations on facebook tumblr and youtube charismatic underscore creations 52 on instagram and the 215 on twitter um the patreon will be up right after wrestlemania we're gonna get ready for that and right around wrestlemania time we're gonna start getting more and more videos and features on the channel but for now let's talk about today's show we will be doing uh woman's blood and guts a little fantasy booking let's call it that we'll call it fantasy booking women's blood and guts well what do you mean women's blood and guts there's never been a women's blood and guts match there's been women working matches in, in the wwe but no blood and guts matches in AEW. well if you've been watching AEW and you should be watching AEW, you know that there's a currently a few going on of the freelancers uh Soraya and Tony Storm with against the E the, oh, the ECW against the AEW originals Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter and this really should be leading to a blood and guts match. So with today's show we're gonna round out the teams, uh look at the storyline a little bit in depth and just have a little bit of fun today. But for now you know what's next so just go on and hit my music so on the news tip the elimination chamber broke well you know it, it, it broke a record um it broke the all-time gate and viewership record uh yeah Saw a 54% increase versus from the previous year. It also marked the largest gate for any WWE event held in Montreal and the largest gate in Elimination Chamber history. Listen, Triple H has been killing it. What can we say? He's he's had some you know stumbles, but we keep hearing these stories of of gates and buy records being broken because you know that's what happens when you have good storytelling kyle o'reilly is making progress after having neck surgery he is doing better he's working on forward or getting himself back as you know he was out at at one point same thing with adam cole um looking forward to seeing kyle o'reilly back and my main man stevie richards philly guy he um had a little health scare he's in you know he had some surgery He's in the hospital, and um, it's it's tough because he he's always been a favorite of mine's. Um, what is he? He he gave us a, he gave us a health update, but he is working on a, his road to recovery. And, and just check out his YouTube channel. That's where he'll be giving us updates rampage on the 17th episode that's the one that came on at seven o'clock right before uh, the, the all-star weekend shenanigans for the nba pulled in 287,000 viewers with a 0. 0.07 then 18 to 49 demo that is down tremendously from the previous week which did 375,000 so uh they got to do something on, on these rampage 
ratings. They really, really, really have to do something. And Raw, their ratings saw a little, little increase. Uh, this previous week's show did two, a little over two million viewers with a 0.56 in the 18 to 49 demo. That is actually up from their previous week. They last week they did 1.8 million viewers with a 0.47 in the 18 to 49 demo. And it looks like we have a date ready for Forbidden Door 2. Um, this comes from cable TV uh, company Spectrum, and they have the dates listed for Forbidden Door 2 as June 24th. We also have Revolution on March 5th and Double or Nothing on May 28th. We also have the Money in the Bank date, which looks at July 1st. As you know, Tony Khan's big announcement was AEW All Access, which is a new reality show for AEW. And it's essentially replacing Rose to the top. They needed something to replace that, seeing as how, you know, Cody is in the WWE now. Uh, Mercedes, Mer I was about to say Mercedes Martinez, Mercedes Monet, who is your new IWGP Women's World Champion. Well, seeing as how we have Forbidden Door, a date with Forbidden Door, she, she probably will be wrestling on that card. And there could be one of two things that can happen. She needs to defend the championship, which I hope she does, which would I hope she does that against a Carl Sheeta. Or we te she teased a uh, uh, an intergender tag team match with Kenny Omega. Uh, who she would face, I don't know. I could see it maybe being... Uh, Mercedes and Kenny versus Okada and Kyrie or Okada and Mayu, but we'll see. Dynamite viewership this week back over one million. Is a little bit over one million viewers this week with a point thirty five in the eighteen to forty nine demo. That is up in both departments from the previous week. That is good. The WWE will reportedly be running multiple live events in May. So, according to WrestleNomics, the WWE are slated, slated to run two uh, big events in May. Backlash uh, and King of the... No, not Backlash. We're looking at We're looking at the King and Queen of the Ring tournament, which will take place that month. And I believe Backlash, actually. So, yeah, but look, here's the funny part. One of these will be the day before Double or Nothing. I mean, it was Double or Nothing All Out. I believe All Out. If I stand correct, I believe it's All. No, Double or Nothing. It's Double or Nothing. Double or Nothing is... No. I'm tripping. I always get Double or Nothing and All Out confused. It will be Double or Nothing. Double or Nothing. There you go. Um... So yeah, that's gonna be it's gonna be weird. That's gonna be a really really big weekend for wrestling. We have an update on Jeff Hardy and his DUI case. So what we know now is he has he has restrictions placed. He his driver's license has been suspended for ten years because of it's a third offense. Third offense. He pleaded uh, to a no low contend day to all charges. A no low translates to I do not wish to contend. And this is a plea of no, pretty much a plea of no contest. So his license is suspended for 10 years. He will be on probation and he will get 38 days for time, 38 days credit for time served in county jail. Also, a bunch of other things, but hopefully, 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 this is the, this is the start of things looking up for Jeff. Hardy, WWE Channel Relations, they have nothing for Matt Riddle because he has not been cleared to return yet, for whether it's for health reasons, his rehab, or even um, just creative have been told, yo, we just don't have anything planned for him right now. Will Matt Riddle miss WrestleMania? It's tough. Anna Jay, she suffered a dislocated rib in the street fight she had a couple weeks ago when her and TJ took on Willow and Ruby Soho, I mean, t yeah, I yeah, they go balls to the wall. I'm at I'm at Ty Conti, but Tay J is the name, is their tag team name. So yeah, um, she just she just dislocated some ribs. It's not fun. So I wish Anna the best. You know I love that girl. 
You know, you know, I love that girl. Um, the WWE Queen is King of the Ring of the Queen's Crown Tournament will be taking place in Saudi Arabia. <sighs> blood money gets what blood money pays for. The date will be looks like May 27th, Memorial Day weekend. So, as we know, double or nothing will be May 28th, and the king's crown king of the ring and queen's crown tournament will be on may 27th that's a really really big weekend of professional wrestling they're there to be they are planning to sign some aew stars when they become free agents they're gonna make a play for them they want kenny they want the bucks whereas aew will try to sign there to be stars whose contract is up so get ready for a couple big Bidding versus Kenny Omega is in a very good position, even though as his contract is expiring, it has been extended for injury time. Miss, but he's in a good position. He's got money. Um, he's back to being healthy. This is going to be fun. This is this is this is definitely going to be fun. It looks like we have a, a release date scheduled for AEW Fight Forever, their first wrestling game, and it looks like it will be coming out March 31st. We will see. I will be getting it. I'm going to get that, and I'm going to get WWE 2K23. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. It's been a minute since I bought a wrestling game. But for now, that's the news, and we shall be right back. So we've got some Fallout shows. We've got some go home shows it's it, you know that, that's that's wrestling so let's just get into the week in review monday night raw we had our fallout show for the elimination chamber we opened up with sammy in the ring once again getting a hero's welcome and he says he's not done with the bloodline that he failed but he's still going to do his best to take them down and he would like ko to help him KO comes out. Sammy apologizes. And KO says, listen, I didn't help you for you. I help you. Uh, I, I let you get beat, but I didn't want to see you get destroyed once again. Or because of what happened to me in front of your family. And you want my help? Nah, go get Jay to help you. It's a good story, B. And I like where we're going with this Baron Corbin attacks Sammy after the match trash tr after the match after that segment trashes him on the mic and Adam Pierce makes a match between the two which Sammy wins and the downfall of Corbin continues just give me down bad Corbin give me bum ass broke ass Baron Corbin had a backstage in interview with Rhea Ripley and Dom was pretty much to set up their appearance on SmackDown, they really, they really didn't say much here. Uh, Ali beats Ziggler with the most devastating move in all the sports entertainment. We had a promo segment between Paul Heyman and Cody Rhodes, and Sammy was still getting chances, so they had Paul Heyman come in quickly. And Heyman essentially said, "You don't want to be champion, Cody, because you don't want to be on the road and away from your family." And he evoked the name of Dustin and Dusty, and said some other things. It wasn't as good as their previous. Um, promo battles that he had, but it was still good. Oscar defeated Nikki Cross. Carmella wants some of Oscar. Seth defeated The Miz. This is one of the better matches we've seen from Miz in a long time. Seth was very, very aggressive here, and he just killed Miz with three curb stomps. Um, we had a ding dong hello, uh, uh, you know, ding dong hello, the in ring interview, talk show, whatever, uh, and it ended with Lita and Becky. Uh, Essentially getting themselves a women's tag team title shot next week on Raw. Uh, Candice LeRae was interviewed backstage and she confronted Nikki. And essentially Nikki whispered to her that all her friends are gone. So it's either it's either leading to the return of Sanity or Nikki and Candice LeRae becoming a tag team. But I, I want to know where Indy Hartwell fits in all of this. Bronson Reed defeated Chad Gable in a fun little match. I'm just tired of Chad Gable losing. They did tease a little, tease a little something, something between Otis and Bronson Reed, but Otis was distracted again by uh, Maxine of the Maximum Male Models. Lashley comes out. He walks with Elias and squashes him. 
ends him. It wasn't even a match, it was just a beat down. And in the main event, Austin Theory defended the United States Championship against Edge, and he retained after some interference from Finn Balor. This was a good show, this was a fine show, nothing crazy, um, nothing truly awful. Bianca Belair was on commentary, wasn't commentary, she was at the commentary desk for the Asuka and Nikki match. Didn't say anything. Um, she even confronted Asuka, and I, I just not feeling the storyline. I don't know how they're going to drag this off for six weeks up until WrestleMania. Over on Dynamite, we had a solid show building towards Revolution. Orange Cassidy retained the All Atlantic Championship against Wheeler Yuta. Uh, OC offered Yuta a hug after the match, but Claudio told him to not comply, and well, Yuta did not comply. But we're seeing that, you know, OC cares. We're seeing evolution of his character. Ricky Starks tricked Chris Jericho to give him a match at Revolution with the JAS band from ringside. Peter Avalon wanted to answer Ricky Starks' open challenge, but he caught a Judas effect for his troubles. The Acclaim defeated Big Bill and Lee Moriarty. Jungle Boy uh, attacks Christian right after the match. Christian came out was coming out for an interview, but Christian gets the upper hand. Soraya defeated Sky Blue. Jamie and Britt run off Soraya and Tony after the match, and Ruby sticks her claim as the next challenger, and will be getting a triple threat match for the Women's Championship at Revolution with Jamie Hayter defending against Soraya and Ruby. We had some more stuff between Brian Danielson and MJF, and I'm just ready for the match at this point. Let us get there. Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal won the tag team battle royal to be added to the Fatal 4 way match at Revolution in the main event, John Moxley defeated Evil Uno in a blood bath. Because once again, what's the John Moxley match without him bleeding? Lord, it's getting to like New Jack levels at this point. The BCC and the Dark Order came out to keep order between the two sides. Over on Impact, we had our No Surrender Go Home show. The Motor City Machine Guns defeated Jonathan Gresham and Speed by Mike Bailey. Deanna Peraza says that she is ready for. Giselle Shaw, we had a Tommy, Tommy Dreamer squash match. Allison K defeated Taya Valkyrie. Rich Swan and um, Josh Alexander had a contract signing, which ends in Swan and Steve Macklin brawling this kind of telegraph. Who was going to win the Fatal Four? We had no surrender. Cass and Yu Yu Yamura defeated Sammy Callahan and Cody Deaner. Mickey James and Masha promos. We had a Bully Ray squash match. And in the main event, Trey Miguel retained the X Division title against Crazy Steve in a Monsters Ball match match and again we had no surrender friday so what happened on the pre-show diana parazzo uh def no giselle shaw defeated diana parazzo uh speedball mike bailey defeated jonathan gresham it was a really really um I'm just say it was a, it was a it was a it was a solid solid match um and on the main show, Jonathan Gresham defeated Speedball. On the main show, Frankie Azarian defeated Khan. Uh, the Death Dials retained the Knockouts Tag Team Championships over, over the Hex. But I don't think this is over between these two teams. Joe Hendry retained uh, the Impact Digital Media Championship against Moose in a dot combat match. Steve Macklin defeated Brian Myers Heath and PCL to become the number one contender for the Impact World Championship. The Bullet Club team of Ace Austin, Chris Bay, and Kenta defeated Time Machine, the team of Alex Shelley, Chris Saban, and Kushida. Mickey James retained the Knockouts Tag Team Knockouts Championship against Masha Slamovich in the main event. Josh Alexander retained the Impact World Championship over Rich Swan. Over on SmackDown, Elimination Chamber Fallout. We opened up with a six-man tag match. Imperium defeating the team of Braun, Strowman, Ricochet, and Mad Cat Moss. I'm expecting a Mad Cat Moss heel turn at some point, ladies and gentlemen. The Viking Raiders attacked Drew McIntyre after the match, but Sheamus made the save. Rey Mysterio and Shamsu Escobar are having a conversation backstage until Dom shows up, runs down Rey. Escobar steps up to whoop Dom's ass, but Rhea steps in because, you know, mommy got to pop, you know, mommy got to protect her, her man. Paul Heyman tells Jimmy that he needs to deal with Jay twin to twin in the ring. We had an Ellie Knight uh, in the ring promo. He was talking. He was confronted by the New Day, which leads to a match and Kofi wins. Uh, this really didn't do much. Ellie Knight shouldn't be losing to Kofi. I, I, listen, Kofi's a former world champion, and the New Day are great, but they've been 
subpar recently. Um, Dom confronts Charlotte in the ring and they have some words and Dom compares to like, yo, you know, we've surpassed our fathers. You know, our fathers were scumbags, yada, yada, yada. Um, Charlotte steps up to Dom and once again, Rhea comes out and Dom holds her back. <laughs> this is great. Um, Shayna basically defeated Natalia. We had a Firefly Funhouse segment. Uh, it was weird, it was funny, but essentially Bray calling out Bobby Lashley. Karrion Cross defeated Rey Mysterio after Dominic got involved, and Rey won't hit his son, so we're definitely getting this match at WrestleMania. And Jimmy, in the main event segment, tells Sami Zayn that, though, yo, you put me in an awkward position, because Sami's like, yo, you were the first one, you accepted me. Remember, we were dogs. We were, we were boys, and you you took you you attacked me with no hesitation and jimmy's like you put me in an awkward position dog you are my family i'm choosing my family jay comes out and he's just standing in the crowd and jimmy attacks sammy they fight sammy gets the upper hand and solo comes out to to stop him so sammy escapes but him and jay share a look and boy it's this storyline continues and continues and continues over on Rampage, the Young Bucks defeated Aussie Open in a fantastic match. Man, this is mm -mm -mm, this is some good stuff. The House of Black make their presence known, and we will be getting that trio championship match at Revolution. Tony Storm defeated Willow Nightingale, and Jamie and Britt come out to fight. And uh, Ruby also comes out to save Willow because you know they are tag team partners. We had a Lance Archer squash match, Keith Lee. And Dustin Rhodes had some words for Swerve that they're not done with them and the mobile affiliates. And in the main event, Sammy Guevara defeated Action on Dreddy. Our matches of the week from Dynamite. Orange Cassidy versus Wheeler Yuta for the All Atlantic Championship. Us from Dynamite, John Moxley versus Evil Uno and another Bloodbath. I wish my I wish Mox didn't bleed so much. From Impact. The Mortar City Machine Guns versus Jonathan Gresham and Mike Bailey because why would this match be bad? It's the Mortar City Machine Guns, Jonathan Gresham and Mike Bailey. Also from Impact, the Monsters Ball match for the X Division Championship, Trey McGill versus Crazy Steve. This was bananas. Oh my God. This was crazy. Why aren't you all watching Impact? Wrestling from Rampage, the Young Bucks versus Aussie Open and Sammy Guevara versus Action Andretti, and from No Surrender, Time Machine versus the Bullet Club, the Knockout Championship match between Mickey James and Masha Slamovich, and the Impact World Championship match between Josh Alexander and Rich Swan. Some good, good wrestling this week. It kind of sucks that the WWE didn't have anything. Um, for us this week in terms of like a high high quality match in our star of the week i'm actually going to give it to ex-con dom he was just on a roll this week on just both raw and smackdown he's been amazing and this heel turn has been nothing short of fantastic for him but that's our weekend review and we shall be right back Blood and guts, blood and guts, blood and guts, blood and guts, blood and guts. Y'all know what blood and guts is, aka War Games. Blood and guts is AEW's version of War Games, and they've had two. There were supposed to be three, but the COVID-19 pandemic shuts that down. The difference between uh AEW's Blood and Guts and WWE's War Games is that the WWE will hold theirs at pay-per-view events, whereas AEW does theirs on the, um, Dynamite episodes. So there's been two Blood and Guts matches in AEW, with the first one taking place in 2020, and it was the Inner Circle, Chris Jericho, Jake Hager, Sammy Guevara, Santana, and Ortiz taking on the Pinnacle, MJF, Wardlow, Sean Spears, Cash Wheeler, and Dax hardwood and the pinnacle one that's match just look at just just go and look at like the pinnacle mjf wordless Sean spears cash wheeler dex the outlier here is ftr 
Y'all remember the pinnacle? <laughs> the second Blood and Guts match took place in June, and it was the Jericho Appreciation Society, Chris Jericho, Jake Hager, Sammy Guevara, Dan Garcia, Matt Minarda, Angelo Parker, taking on the team of Eddie Kingston, Santana, Ortiz, and the Blackpool Combat Club, John Moxley, Willie Yuta, and Claudio Castagnoli. And, well, both matches were pretty crazy. They were, they were, they were, they were pretty nuts. Um, but, it, but they, they know how to put on just a phenomenal, phenomenal event. So, why am I bringing up Blood and Guts? Well, if you haven't been paying attention, there is a storyline going on right now in the AEW Women's Division. Tony Storm and Soraya calling themselves the freelancers are essentially saying that they're better than the other women in the company because they are stars. They are former stars from, well, the E and they bring star power. They're just better. And that the AEW originals, well, they need to fall in line and fall behind them. And the two heading up the, the, the side for the AEW Originals are Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter. So the question is, who's going to side with the Originals? Who's going to side with the Freelancers? And the woman caught up in the middle of all of this is Ruby Soho. She's the catalyst for a lot of this actually and it's good to see her featured so the story for from here on out has been who will ruby side with technically she is a freelancer she's an outsider coming into the coming in um but we'll break that down we're gonna take a look at the roster we're gonna split everybody up and then i'm gonna round out the five potential who i think should be the five members of each team and their reasoning for why they should join all right so let's take a look at the current aew women's roster all right so we got to see who's been featured on tv uh who will who has a shot a chance to to really be featured in this match so we're just gonna we're just gonna we're just gonna run it down in alphabetical order um Anna J A S. She is an AEW original. But she's also currently out with some dislocated ribs. So she's out of the question. And since Anna's out of the question, does that mean Ty Conti's out of the question? I I don't what Ty Mello. I I don't I don't I don't think so. So but I think Anna's out. Uh, Ashley D'Ambo is Athena. Athena is our current Ring of Honor Women's World Champion. But I could definitely see her being featured in this match. She is a heel and the Freelancers has to be a predominantly heel team. Athena fits right in. So I'm adding her to the Freelancers team. All right. Charlotte Renegade, Ring of Honor, Dasha, Diamante. Diamante, yeah, she has wrestled on the indie. She's wrestled for other companies, especially she's wrestled for Impact Wrestling. Remember, she was a member of LAX. Uh, she is featured. I think she has a shot. This would be a perfect way to elevate someone. So I will put Diamante on the originals. All right. Next up, we got Emmy Sakura. Um, you need a veteran presence, and the freelancers are definitely going to need a veteran presence, like a, a a strong, strong person. So Emmy Sakura has to go on to the originals. All right, Hikaru Shida, the truest true definition of an AEW original 
question is why would you team up with Britt and Jamie Hayter? But for now, remember, we're just doing our originals and our freelancers. So we're going to put Carl Shida on the originals, okay? Jay Cargo, another original. She's also a heel. So it's tough. I, she could be involved. She doesn't currently have a TBS challenger, but she did say on Rampage that she's opened it up to anybody. She's quote unquote beating everybody. But I'm gonna put Jade on the originals. Uh, Julia Hart. Julia Hart has nothing to do with it. She is an original. She's currently focused on the House of Black. She has no reason to get involved here. Kiara Hogan. She is not an original. And if Jade's going to be there, that means Kiera has to be there. So I'm going to add Kiera to the freelancers team, okay? Chris Thetlander, who I very, very, very much love. Still out with the injury. We're not sure if she's when she's going to come back. So we're going to rule out Chris Thetlander right now. Layla Gray, uh, Jade's going to do the heavy lifting. We ain't got to worry about Layla Gray like Leva Bates. So, Leva is an original. I'm going to put her on the. I'm going to put her on the team, just because she was attacked by Tony and Soraya. Layla Hirsch is out with a with an injury. Madison Rain is not an original. She's not going to be really featured much in this feud. Um, she would be a freelancer. But she's not going to be featured much. Marie Kamel is not going to be wrestling. Marina Shafir. Listen, she really didn't do much in NXT. So I'm going to I'm going to count her as she's not even an original. She was just brought in. So she actually would be a freelancer. So I'm going to put Marina Shafir on the freelancers team. All right. Uh, Mercedes Martinez definitely not an original definitely a freelancer badass 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 she, last time we saw her she, was, she lost the Ring of Honor Women's Championship to Athena would she team with Athena but let's go for uh, uh, the sake of the story we're going to put Mercedes Martinez on the freelancers Nyla Rose another true definition of an original Nyla is an original again we'll get into it later we're just going to put Nyla we're going to put Nyla on the originals okay we have Paige Van Zant, Penelope Ford Ford is also an original Ford is definitely an original um, could I see her getting featured in this few? You need somebody crazy. Like you, you need somebody nuts. So I'm gonna put Penelope on the originals. All right. You got Penelope Ford. We have Rebel. She's not wrestling. Red Velvet. Red Velvet is an original. We're gonna put her on originals, even though that's on the same side as Jade Cargo. Renee Riho, another original. So we're going to put Riho on the originals. Ruby Soho, for the sake of the story right now, is, is, an, is, is a freelancer, okay? So we're going to put Ruby on the freelancers. Uh, Serena Deeb, not an original, also not really a freelancer but i don't think she would get involved in this storyline sky blue was also attacked um i'm going to put her on the originals all right i'm gonna put sky blue on the originals okay tay mellow she actually would be a freelancer because she did spend time in NXT doing things. The bunny would also 
be a freelancer. So that will put her uh, up opposite of her tag team partner and Penelope Ford. Even though she's out with an injury, I didn't include Layla Hirsch. I didn't include uh, I didn't include Anna J. I didn't include Chris Stantlander. So I'm not including Thunder Rosa. I just I just can't. And lastly, we have Willow. Nightingale is another person featured a little bit in this feud by proximity just because of she's a tag team partner with Ruby Soho so the question is where would she fit where would she fit in the story for now I'm going to I'm actually going to put I'm going to put Willow in the freelancers okay now we have our freelancers. We have our originals. So let's run it down one more time who our freelancers are, not including the already two members that we have Athena, Kiara Hogan, Marina Shafir, Mercedes Martinez, Ruby Soho, Tay Mello, The Bunny, Willow Nightingale. Same for the originals Diamante, Emi Sakura, Hikaru Shida. Jade Cargo, Leela Bates, Penelope Ford, Red Velvet, Riho, and Sky Blue. Is there a chance for an outsider for the originals? I mean, for the uh, for the freelancers. Is there, is there a chance for maybe a Mercedes Monet or a Diana Parazzo? You know what I mean? Yeah, there's always a chance there's always a, a chance that it could happen there's always uh a, 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 an opportunity right but i don't i don't think we're gonna do that even though even though even though they do call on somebody they're probably calling mercedes monet she will be wrestling AEW aw in this year at some point so now we need to build the team so let's build the freelancers the freelancers are a little bit easier to build so we already have soraya we already have Tony Storm. So, if we have Soraya, we have Tony Storm. I think a guaranteed definite member of the team would be Athena. She's the current Ring of Honor Women's Champion. She's wrestled on the Indies, but she's also wrestled on the main roster on the Dirty B and in NXT. She's a freelancer through and through. So, Soraya, Tony, Athena, that's already a strong team so we need two more people from the freelancers so here's a tough tough here's a, here's a really tough question the freelancers have to be bad guys we have Soraya we have Tony and we have Athena Ruby and Tay Mello are freelancers right they just had a blood feud they just had a blood feud and Athena and Mercedes just had a feud for the Ring of Honor Women's Championship. So building the freelancers is hard because can people, can the women put aside their differences to work together? That I don't know. But... I will say that Tay will be a little caught up with whatever's going on with the JAS. So here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. If I'm canceling out Tay Mello, I'm going to put Ruby on the team. I I think Ruby, she wants to go out alone, but at the end of the day, she's going to side with Tony and Saray. And I'm going to tell you why once I build out the originals team. Okay. And because Ruby's on the team, I think her tag team partner, Willow, will be on the team. Right. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Bunny is a freelancer. She won't go against uh, Penelope for it. That just, that's just out of the question. All right. 
And since Ruby and Tay are our rivals, that's not happening. So we need one more member of the team. I think that'll be Kiera Hogan. Kiera Hogan will get a spotlight. Uh, she gets another opportunity to oppose a certain TBS champion. So let's round out the freelancers with Kiera Hogan. All right. Now, that's six members. I'm using six to play it safe. Um, just just as a, as a backup. But I think I, I I truly believe that Soraya, Tony, and Athena are the, like the definite guarantees for this feud. Ruby, Willow, Kira Hogan rounds everything out. Now, there's a giant giant elephant in the room when it comes to the originals because the originals definitely have talent on their side of the roster right but there's that elephant in the room and who is that elephant what is that elephant it's Britt Baker you have to ask yourself when you're watching this feud go down right why would why would Sheeta? Why would Nyla? Why would Riho team up with Britt Baker? Why? Why? So let's let's just put a like who I think is definitely gonna be on the team. I think Jade's gonna be on the team. Jade doesn't have an opponent. So we're gonna put Jade Cargo on the team, right? Jade's on the team. Jade and Kier Hogan, bam, we're done. And because Jade's on the team, Red Velvet won't be on the team so that leaves three more members and I think the three really could be the women that are former champions right so I want to round out the team with Hikaru Shida Nyla Rose and Riho. And you ask yourself, and I'm asking, why would these three women team with Britt and Jamie? They've been jumped by Britt and Jamie. Britt and Jamie have cheated in matches against them. They've had multiple, multiple matches against them. And it's never been pretty. But we we're told right now that Britt and Jamie are the good guys here. So, we got a round of the team with the good guys because we have a bad guy on the team in Jade. Jade's doing it for the money. Flat out. Jade's doing it for the money. And I can see, I can see Sheeta and Riho doing this for the pride, the pride of AEW. Nyla just wants to have fun. So it's a matter of Kim Britt put Kim Britt be the bigger person and apologize. Jamie's the champion. She ain't got to apologize for shit. Kim Britt apologize. Kim Britt be humble and lay posh prostrate and say, yo, I'm sorry, but I need your help. That's the million dollar question. Because if we're looking at the freelancers, Soraya, Tony, Athena, Ruby, Willow, Kira, that's a solid squad. But you give me Sheeta, Nyla, and Riho, along, along with Jamie. That's four. That's three former women world women's champions and one and the current champion. And that's not to sneeze at the freelancers because Soraya, Tony, Athena are former women's champions. The elephant in the room, the big issue here is Britt Baker. It just... <laughs> it's going to be interesting on how they put these teams together. Because we're already about to hit March. 
And as you've seen, Blood and Guts is usually around May and June, right before or after um, Double or Nothing. I'm excited because this this has the potential to redefine the women's division. This has the the chance, the, the, the opportunity for Tony to show that he actually gives a damn about the women's division he's been he did a little he's been doing a little bit better recently the women this week weren't shoving to that 920 time slot and the week before they were in the main event but this has to be major and tony khan doesn't pull the trigger quickly on storylines he, he wants things he, he wants a slow burn so here we are women's blood and guts I gave you the six members of each team one more time for the freelancers, Soraya, Tony Storm, Athena, Ruby Soho, Willow Nightingale, and Kiera Hogan from the originals, Britt Baker, Jamie Hayter, Jay Cargill, Hikaru Shida, Nyla Rose, and Riho. The wild card is Britt and her ego, and will the freelancers go and get outside help? Because they can always get outside help, that's the thing. I'm excited. Let me know what you all think. Would you move the teams around? Do you think I'm correct in ruling out um, Anna and Thunder Rosa and Chris Statlander? But we'll find out in a couple couple months, two, two and a half months. But that's our show. Thank you once again very much for listening, for watching. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Please like, comment, and subscribe trying to grow man I'm trying to grow and grow and grow this is what i love man. i want to do this for you all uh come back tuesday or wednesday on the instagram to see the new schedule for march we will have how many shows we got for march we have four shows scheduled for march two of them will definitely be on revel one of them will definitely be on revolution the other will be on wrestle mania all right but that's our show don't forget to check out the socials charismatic creations on facebook tumblr and youtube charismatic underscore creations 52 on instagram the 215 on twitter and as always zaya shotzi willow and Gigi dolan holla at your boy peace